Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for this kind introduction, Wittes. I'm delighted, dear audience, to present to you today my research on the relation of sound and suspense in literary fiction with a focus on ambient sound in Gothic fiction. The following is the outcome of my research stay with Professor Mark Olge Hewitt at the Stanford Literary Lab last winter. Sound and Gothic fiction. In our literary studies approach, we embarked on an exploration of the fictional soundscape within Gothic fiction. Distinct from the 19th century realist literature, this genre ventures into the realms of the sensational, the fantastic, and the uncanny. Our specific focus rested on the creation of an uncanny atmosphere through the employment of scary sounds that evoke uncertainty and suspense. Earlier this year, Matt Foley published a monograph titled The Vocal-Centric Sound World of Gothic Writing, which, de which delves into Gothic voices and their uncanny nature. Foley's close reading approach primarily examines ghostly phenomena and enigmatic voices that hound the narrative. In our research, we aim to complement Foley's work by adopting a data-driven approach that combines close and distant reading methods within the realm of digital humanities. Our objective is to investigate the fictional soundscapes present in Gothic novels and short stories. To illustrate the impact of ambient sound, consider the following passage from Charles Dickens' Bleak House. It's 11 o'clock striking by the bell of St. Paul's. Listen, and you'll hear all the bells in the sitting jangling. Both sit silent, listening to the metal voices, near and distant, resounding from towers of various heights, in tones more various than their situations. When these at length cease, all seems more mysterious and quiet than before. In our research, we draw upon Murai Schäfer's concept of soundscape, a fusion of sound and landscape introduced in 1994. This concept redirects our attention from the visual elements to the auditory dimensions of the literary work. Instead of examining the descriptions of the landscapes, we focus on the sounds portrayed in the fictional world. Schaffer divides the sounds into different categories, of which we particularly focus on the sounds of nature, <laughs> industry, <laughs> and society. <laughs> This study is a part of my larger dissertation project, which systematically analyzes the role of sound in literary fiction. Our primary, primary research questions investigate the explicit descriptions of sound and the differences in soundscapes within 19th century English literary prose, with a specific emphasis on the Gothic fiction genre. We hypothesize that Gothic literature has an increased frequency of ambient sound indicators, particularly those that describe loud and scary sounds, to emphasize the atmosphere of uncertainty and the uncanny that characterize this genre. Additionally, we present innovative approaches to operationalize sound at the world level, showcasing both manual and automatized methods for detecting ambient sound indications in 19th century English literary prose. For that, we assembled a corpus comprising 55 British literary fictional prose texts from the 19th century. The corpus includes 28 British Gothic novels and short stories, as well as 27 other canonical British fiction texts. Methodologically, we proceeded in a three-step process, from manual annotation to dictionary-based annotation to automation of sound word classification. To ensure high quality annotation of ambient sound indicators, we manually annot annotated 14 texts from our corpus, with an approximately total of 1.5 million annotated words based on guidelines that we iteratively refined according to the recommendations by Writer 2020. The chief inter annotator agreement of 0.8 Kuhn's Kapper indicates substantial agreement among the annotators, but also the complexity of the annotation task. If you recall the sample text from the beginning with the highlighted sound words, you might wonder why the detection of fictional sounds should be so difficult. And you're right. 
The simple detection of lexical sound words at the word level could easily be done with a dictionary approach, as we will show later. But even if it is possible to detect the phenomenon of sound at the word level by looking at the lexicon, not every lexical sound word is also an explicit indication of sound in the fictional soundscape. And implicit sound indications must be distinguished from explicit ones. Here's a sample to illustrate the challenge. Let's imagine a locomotive entering a station. With your word knowledge, you know directly that a locomotive makes a lot of noise. However, the simple description of the train's entrance does not provide any information about the sound it produces. There is no information on the fictional soundscape. On the contrary, to get insights into the fictional soundscape, we need explicit information like in the second sample phrase. The train rattles into the station. Here we are explicitly informed about the noisy entrance of the train offering insights into the fictional soundscape. To speed up the annotation process, we ap applied a dictionary approach anyway. We compiled a sound word dictionary consisting of 228 sound words manual manually extracted from the training data. This approach proved to be useful to detect sound words at the word level, but it also has its limitations. The annotation is context independent, which leads to a significant number of false positives because the mere occurrence of a sound word in the text does not automatically indicate a realized sound in the fictional soundscape. That's when the context-dependent nature of sound detection became evident. Examples include sounds in the past tense, hypothetical scenarios, negated sounds, and non-sound indicating properties. However, despite these challenges, the dictionary-based annotations remained valuable. By deleting the false positives, a substantial number of true positive annotations remained, which were included in the training data for our ambient sound classifier. To automatize the annotation process, we used the NICE TEI entity enricher software provided by Zonat al 2021. This software utilizes, utilizes um, a pre-trained BERT model, BERT case by Devlin al 2019 for English text. While the system was initially designed for named entity recognition, it can be domain adapted for other tasks. A comparable approach was used by Schumacher, Flü, and Lemke to fine tune this classifier for gender annotation. Through the use of transfer learning algorithms and fine tuning on our hand labeled dataset, we achieved an F1 score of 0.71 on the sound classification task sound versus no sound. For the presentation of our results, I will show you a sample passage from Elizabeth Gaskell's ghost story, The Old Nurse's Story, enriched with XMLTI annotation, sound. The loudness level annotation was included separately based on the loudness dictionary. Referring to Gaskell's story, I will now guide you through some of the results. I visualized the annotations showing each token and its associated sound annotation with a loudness level on the, x, uh, on the y axis. Here you can see where the snippet is located in the course of the text. You can observe the annotated sound indications and distinguish the different loudness levels. In the analysis of the soundscapes, it is essential to consider silence as part of the scene setting. Here is still Gaskell's ghost story, but this time only the loud and quiet sounds are visualized with a red emphasis on indicated silence. Particularly in the second cluster, silence indicates the absence of sounds that can be perceived by the characters. However, the silent soundscape is often interrupted by soundful events such as sudden thunder, knocking at a door, explosions, or screams. In Gaskell's ghost story, for instance, the quiet ambience of the night is disrupted by the loud playing of an organ. Furthermore, we calculated the sound word density by dividing the total number of sound words by the total number of tokens in the text and multiplying it by 100. To mitigate any bias caused by text length, 
we separately compared lo larger, longer, and shorter texts. As to be seen in these box plots, on average, we found a higher sound word density in Gothic novels. However, looking at the shorter text, we found that they had a particularly high average density of ambient sounds relative to their brevity and regardless of their genre. In summary, our approach provides a more comprehensive understanding of the soundscape in Gothic fiction compared to other 19th century prose. It shows that any R methods with domain adaption, adaptation can be useful to detect ambient sound indications, even if it does not find all of them. Our results suggest that Gothic fiction has a higher density of ambient sounds that are indicative of the detailed story's ambient soundscape with a particularly high frequency of loud sounds. In addition, we found that shorter texts have a high average density of ambient sounds relative to their brevity. However, there's, there are still many unanswered questions and untested approaches to approaching the systematic analysis of sound in literary studies, and I look forward to discussing these with you. Thank you.